Hello, welcome to Engineering Made Easy. I am Lalit Vasist. In this video, we will discuss conventional AM versus double sideband suppressed carrier versus single sideband versus vestigial sideband. These all are the types of uh, amplitude modulation and the basic difference between these uh, is explained here. Here we will see uh, what we mean by conventional AM, DSB, SC, SSB and VSB, how they are different and what are uh, various advantages and disadvantages of using these types of uh, amplitude modulation schemes. We will also see various applications where they are used. Okay, So, before we start this video lecture, let us see today's quiz. This quiz is related to this uh, video and the question is which of the following amplitude modulation scheme requires minimum bandwidth that is which one of these uh, amplitude modulation scheme is most efficient so option a is conventional am option b is a single sideband known as ssb in short double sideband suppressed carrier or vestigial sideband vsb okay so if you know the answer of this question please uh, write your answers in the comment section of this video and now let us start our video. So, as I told you that uh, all these types are the types of amplitude modulation and here we will discuss, we will compare these, uh, all these schemes. So, first know what are these schemes and why they are named so. First one is the conventional AM. Okay? In this amplitude uh, modulated signal, we have a carrier wave and two sidebands. So, it has uh, two sidebands along with the carrier. Now, the second one is the DSBSC, double sideband suppressed carrier. It is it, it is its full form. So, it has uh, as, uh, as it is clear by the name itself that it is it has suppressed carrier. Carrier is not present. Carrier is suppressed while transmitting. So, it has double sidebands only while conventional AM has carrier also along with the two sidebands. So, carrier is suppressed. So, carrier is removed. Only sidebands are present in this. Now, the third one is SSB, single sideband, clear by its name that it has only single sideband. So, it has uh, no carrier and one sideband is suppressed. It is removed. So, only one that is a single sideband is present, carrier and one sideband is suppressed at transmission. Okay. The fourth one is vestigial sideband vsb this is another modulation scheme of amplitude modulation so in this what we do instead of rejecting one sideband completely like we do in uh, ssb where we have only one sideband single sideband we do not remove it completely we uh, what we do a gradual cutoff of one sideband is allowed in this sideband is not removed completely now it's time to see the advantages and applications of all these uh, four types of amplitude modulation schemes. So, let us start. So, first one is the demodulation that is the detection of conventional AM is easier in comparison to that of double sideband suppressed carrier and single sideband systems. The demodulation of conventional AM is also less costly. It is less expensive. So, if you want a cheap and easy option for detection of the signal, then we should adopt conventional AM, where in the modulated signal we have a carrier wave and two sidebands. Its demodulation is easier in comparison to DSBSC and SSB, and also less expensive. Now see the second point. It is easy to produce conventional AM signals at high power levels. So these can be used for broadcasting services. As we know that broadcasting services, uh, where we have uh, we transmit a signal and uh, it reaches millions of people okay it need to be a cheap solution and it should be produced easily and at low cost so if we need broadcasting services then in that case we use conventional am okay so high signal high power levels of signals can easily be produced with a conventional am so we use it for broadcasting services the third point Double sideband suppressed carrier and single sideband systems require lesser power to transmit the same information. Why? Because in conventional AM, larger power is wasted, that is the two-third of the power is wasted in carrier that contains no information. As we know that the information is present only in the sidebands. 
sidebands carry the information although the one sideband is enough uh, to get the full information the second sideband is just the replica but carrier contains no information well we now know that uh, the conventional am contains carrier wave also that contains no information so the large power is required to transmit the carrier wave large power is wasted that is two third is wasted so it is a big amount that has been wasted in transmitting the carrier so overall we see that uh, if we want a system that requires lesser power to transmit then we use double sideband suppressed carrier and single sideband because in double sideband suppressed carrier carrier has been suppressed carrier is suppressed so no carrier here and then also in single sideband we have only single sideband so no carrier so we want that carrier should not be present as it consumes large power to transmit in case of conventional AM it is two third so only one third power is uh, used uh, to, tra uh, to transmit the information in case of conventional AM so conventional uh, AM is not a good option from the power point of view although it is a cheap option and uh, also easy and less complex option in comparison to DSB-SC and SSB now let's come to the fourth comparison the DSB-SC and SSB modulation systems are used in point-to-point -point communication while conventional AM in public broadcasting systems because the receivers of DSB-SC and SSB are although efficient but are much more complex and expensive I have told you it earlier that uh, this uh, conventional AM is used for public broadcasting as it can produce large powers and uh, not only this uh, since we know that uh, a public uh, broadcasting system need to be an inexpensive or you can say less costly and easy to maintain okay and easy to operate system because it has to serve a large number of people millions of people so if we want to serve large number of people that is for broadcasting public broadcasting purpose then we go for conventional am but if we want uh, to use point to point communication that is a single transmitter and a few receivers then we use double sideband suppressed carrier technique or the single sideband system okay the fifth point is here is the comparison or the order of bandwidth required in uh, all these four amplitude modulation schemes that is there is the order of bandwidth required okay uh, so large amount of bandwidth is required for the conventional am because it contains two sidebands and a carrier wave also and less than this is required in double sideband suppressed carrier and smaller than this is required in vsb vestigial sideband and least the minimum amount of bandwidth is required that is you can see that it is single sideband is the most efficient scheme okay in amplitude modulation so this is the order keep it in mind very important okay so single sideband is the most efficient modulation scheme okay from the bandwidth point of view you should also notice here that the bandwidth required in single sideband is only half of the bandwidth required in double sideband suppressed carrier because it has two sidebands without carrier only two sidebands and it has a single sideband so bandwidth is half of the bandwidth required in dsbsc also you should note here that bandwidth of vestigial sideband vsb is nearly 25 percent higher than that of the ssb but much lesser than dsbsc that is ssb single sideband is most efficient it needs least bandwidth in uh, all these four schemes uh, even uh, smaller than the vsb and the VSB's uh, bandwidth is only 25% higher than the SSB, which is the least. Okay, SSB uh, requires least bandwidth. Sixth point, VSB signal generation is easiest in comparison to other techniques like conventional AM, DSBSC, and SSB. In all of these uh, four schemes, vestigial sideband signal generation is found to be easiest it is easiest if you want to generate amplitude modulation signal then uh, we adopt vsb signal generation for easiest processing okay the seventh point it is based on the applications uh, where these uh, schemes are used this vestigial sideband vsb is used for the transmission of television signals ssb is used for long distance transmission of voice signals while conventional AM finds its application mostly in public broadcasting services. 
So, uh, we have already seen it that conventional AM finds its application in public broadcasting services. We know this. The thing, new thing is that this VSB, vestigial sideband is used in the transmission of television signals. Okay? And this SSB, single sideband, containing only one sideband is the most efficient modulation scheme and uh, it is used for long distance transmission. We use it for transmission of voice signals when we want to transmit it to long distances because it allows to use the repeaters at large distances. So long distance transmission of voice signals is possible with a single sideband while VSB is a standard for the transmission of uh, television signals. So this is the comparative study of uh, four amplitude modulation schemes conventional AM, double sideband suppressed carrier, vestigial sideband and single sideband. Hope you enjoyed the video and got some information about these uh, schemes and their applications and comparative uh, study merits demerits. So in the next video we will see all these uh, schemes in some detail. So keep watching engineering made easy for more such videos and don't forget to subscribe my channel engineering made easy thanks for watching have a nice day and don't forget to like my video thank you see you soon in the next video bye bye friends for more such videos you can uh, subscribe my channel engineering made easy and please don't forget to like and share the video if you liked it for more detailed information you can uh, visit my blog see you soon in the next video till then bye bye